All right, <clears throat> moving forward to Acts chapter 21. <clears throat> and it came to pass that after we were gotten from them and had launched, we came with a straight course unto Coos, and then in the day following unto Rhodes, and from thence unto Patara, and finding a ship sailing over unto Venicia, or Phenicia, we went abroad and set forth, and when we had discovered Cyprus, we left it on the left hand, and sailed into Syria, and landed at Tyre. For there the ship was to unlaid her burden. And finding disciples, we tarried there seven days, who said to Paul, through the Spirit, that he should not go up to Jerusalem. And when he had accomplished those days, we departed and went our way. And they all brought us on our way, with wives and children, until we were out of the city, and we kneeled down on the shore and prayed. And when we had taken our leave one of another, we took ship, and they returned home again. And when we had finished our course from Tyre and came to Ptolemyus and saluted the brethren and abode with them one day. And the next day we that were of Paul's company departed and came unto Caesarea. And we entered into the house of Philip the evangelist who was one of the seven and abode with him. And the same man had four daughters, virgins, which did prophesy. And as we tarried there many days, there came down to from Judea a certain prophet named Agabus. When he was come unto us, he took Paul's girdle and bound his own hands and feet and said, Thus saith the Holy Ghost, So shall the Jews at Jerusalem bind the man that owneth this girdle, and shall deliver him into the hands of the Gentiles. And when we heard these things, both we and they of that place besought him not to go up to Jerusalem. Then Paul answered, What mean ye to weep and to break mine heart? For I am not ready to be bound only, but also to die at Jerusalem for the name of the Lord Jesus. When he would not be persuaded, we ceased saying, The will of the Lord be done. And after those days we took up our carriages and went up to Jerusalem. And went with, there went with us also certain of the disciples of Caesarea, Caesarea, and brought with him one of Nansen of Cyprus, an old disciple with whom we should lodge. When we were come to Jerusalem, the brethren received us gladly, and the day following Paul went into in with us unto James, and all the elders were present. And when he had saluted them, he declared particularly what things God had wrought among the Gentiles by his ministry. And when they heard it, they glorified the Lord and said unto him, Thou seest, brother, how many thousands of Jews there are which believe, and they are all zealous of the law. And they are informed of thee that thou teachest all the Jews which are among the Gentiles to forsake Moses, saying that they ought not to circumcise their children. <coughs> oh. <coughs> Dang. Sorry, sneezing. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> oh, I'm going to compose myself here. Neither to walk after the customs. For what is it therefore? The multitude must needs come together, for they will hear that thou art come. Do, do therefore this that we say to thee, we have four men which, are, which have a vow on them. Them take and purify themselves with them, and be at charges with them, that they may shave their heads, and all may know that those things whereof they were informed concerning thee are nothing, but that thou thyself also walkest orderly and keepest the law. As touching the Gentiles which believe, we have written and concluded that they observe no such thing, save only that they keep themselves from things offered to idols, and from blood, and from strangled, and from fornication. Then Paul took the men, and the next day, purifying himself with them, entered into the temple to signify the accomplishment of the days of purification until that an offering should be offered for every one of them. And when the seven days were almost ended, the Jews, which were of Asia, 
when they saw him in the temple, stirred up all the people and laid hands on him, crying out, Men of Israel, help! This is the man that teaches all men where we're against the people. All men everywhere against the people and the law. And this place and further brought Greeks also into the temple and have polluted this holy place. For they had seen before with him in the city of Trophimus and an Ephesian, whom they supposed that Paul had brought into the temple. And all the city was moved, and the people ran together, and they took Paul and drew him out of the temple. And forthwith the doors were shut, and as they went about to kill him, tidings came unto the chief captain of the band that all Jerusalem was in an uproar, who immediately took soldiers and centurions and ran down unto them. And when they saw the chief captain and the soldiers, they, they left beating of Paul. Then the chief captain came near and took him and commanded him to be bound with two chains and demanded who he was and what he had done. And some cried one thing and some another among the multitude. And when he could not know <clears throat> the certainty for the tum tumult, he commanded him to be carried into the castle when he came upon the stairs. So it was that he was born of the soldiers for the violence of the people. For the multitude of the people followed after crying away with him. And as Paul was to be led to the castle, he said unto the chief captain, May I speak unto thee? Who said, Canst thou speak Greek? Art not thou an Egyptian, which before these days made us an uproar, and led us out into the wilderness four thousand men that were murderers? But Paul said, I am a man, which am a Jew of Tarsus, a city of Cilicia, a citizen of no mean city, and I beseech thee, suffer me to speak unto the people. And when he had given him license, Paul stood on the stairs and beckoned with the hand unto the people. And when there was made a great silence, he spake unto them in the Hebrew tongue, saying, that will be in the next chapter. So, Paul's with these people. They say that the Holy Spirit basically told them uh, to tell him that if he goes to Jerusalem, he will die. But Paul said that he would gladly die for the name of the Lord Jesus. And... Um, from what I understand, everything af after kind of takes place in Jerusalem. Yeah, and when they were come to Jerusalem, the brethren glad received us gladly, verse 17. So then uh, they heard that, you know, a lot of the Jews said, heard that Paul was saying uh, that nobody had to follow the law anymore, and that upset them. And so he... Uh, said, well, let's have, like, the Jews, uh, you know, follow the customs or whatever just to please these guys is what I get out of it and uh, tell them that still the Gentiles don't have to, but that they that they are. But the Jews uh, <clears throat> that were upset about him were upset still anyways. It didn't change them, their mind. And, and uh, they were upset at him for having a Gentile in the temple, or they thought that he had a Gentile in the temple. And uh, he was beaten again. They left beating of Paul, verse 32. That's at least the second time I remember hearing about him being beaten. Yeah, I mean, he was stoned, almost killed previously. That might be like the third time, I don't know. A lot of times... But uh, he's about ready to give another speech in Acts chapter 22, so we'll continue with that. So, God bless.